this is the right MCA through the aneurysm stent assisted coil mobilization using an unusual access um, through the posterior communicating artery. Um, the reason for this unusual access was this patient is a 64 year old male with a significant medical history um, with bilateral carotid artery um, compromise, uh, the right side being occluded and patient had a previous uh, ECIC bypass with a saphenous graft that thrombosed. Um, the um, anterior communicating artery is quite small, as you can appreciate, and the only access um, to the intracranial circulation for this patient was uh, using the posterior circulation. Um, the patient started to develop headaches and um, on uh, workup showed to have, to have a New, newly diagnosed right MC aneurysm that could be related even to the suture line of the previous bypass. The, um, <clears throat> as you can see, the angiogram uh, multiple views uh, revealed that PCOM was a better access in the anterior communicating artery. So we, we decided to um, proceed with uh, a standing coil treatment of uh, this uh, right MC wide neck aneurysm using an SL10 and a synchro wire and navigating through the posterior circulation into the posterior communicating artery retrograde and uh, getting access to the um, M1. Uh, in this uh, position is uh, somewhat uh, tricky. Uh, the catheterization of the PCOM is uh, something that uh, was um, likely uh, easier, easily done because of the uh, occlusion of the right uh, ICA, so making the PCOM um, more dominant. But you can see here on the navigation that there's a little bit of an angle that needs to be straightened uh, using the synchro wire to be able to uh, navigate the microcatheter. But having a distal position of the wire is very important. And as you can appreciate, one cannot visualize this w very well the anatomy of the middle cerebral artery as you're advancing the wire to give you more support. And uh, so it's very important that uh, once you're able to have enough wire purchase and um, safely navigate the wire, you can then uh, uh, make the microcatheter uh, go around the band of the posterior communicating artery from the P1 position. But uh, once you are into the um, anterior circulation, it's very important to repeat the roadmap and from the microcatheter so you can then see the anatomy very well. At this point, it becomes relatively straightforward uh, in the case that uh, you can uh, navigate into the M2 and proceed to uh, deploy, in this case, was an Elvis Jr. Uh, stent from the uh, M2 to M1 to protect this white neck aneurysm. Um, needless to say, this patient has been fully hypernized in ACT 250 and is uh, on dual on the bladelet. Um, but you can see that um, uh, this navigation now becomes relatively straightforward. Uh, one has an option to use an intermediate catheter, which could be uh, provide more support. Uh, but in this case, we um, were able to make this relatively low profile with a six French uh, guide catheter and an um, SL10 micro catheter to be able to get the full uh, access to this lesion. The choice of uh, going endovascular, not open surgery, is uh, not uh, only the fact that the patient has had a previous craniotomy on that side and um, for the bypass, and the, also the fact that uh, there may be a complexity from scar tissue or the previous uh, saphenous graft suturing, uh, suture line to the middle cerebral artery. The, um, uh, the advantage of using uh, this uh, system is that uh, you can use the same microcatheter to do the stent deployment. And you can see here the stent was uh, fully deployed. Now you can advance the catheter into the uh, stent uh, using the delivery system uh, or the delivery wire. Uh, uh, confirmation angiogram is done through the microcatheter. And uh, once the um, microcatheter is inside of the stent, you uh, replace the synchro wire and get access to the aneurysm now going through the stent struts to start the coiling procedure. 
the advantage of using uh, this uh, type of um, uh, construct is that uh, uh, now we have uh, complete support at the neck of the aneurysm so that the coil um, procedure can be somewhat uh, undersized uh, so that uh, we have an easier time not having catheter kickback and so forth. Here it's really important technical aspect which is uh, the wire um, is, uh, has to have a good purchase inside of the aneurysm and at the same time uh, the microcatheter has to freely navigate and you can see as it's advancing um, forward, is a, there's a little bit of a, a, a jump that has to be controlled and carefully done. But if there's any resistance uh, on the navigation of the microcatheter through these 10 struts, one has to reposition the wire and try a different path. Now the coiling is done relatively simply uh, without uh, um, any challenges uh, since you're uh, providing somewhat of a, uh, you have a support from the Elvis Jr. Um, at the neck of the aneurysm and the coil is um, uh, about uh, one millimeter undersized. Second coil is going in, uh, trying to keep um, the microcatheter in position and avoiding the, uh, being kicked out so that uh, the procedure can be efficient. and. Uh, after uh, the uh, first um, coil is placed, we tend not to use a roadmap and just uh, use uh, fluoroscopy. As you can see, the runs are done basically uh, through the microcatheter to confirm the occlusion of the aneurysm. And uh, in this case, uh, due to the uh, uh, presence of a stent in the coils, we uh, have the aneurysm having still uh, some residual filling, but uh, with a very good um, uh, reconstruction of that area. This uh, is likely to thrombose um, since uh, the um, main flow through the carotid artery is um, occluded, and this is all filling from the posterior communicating artery. Uh, we hope that this video uh, was helpful to understand a uh, option of using the, the posterior communicating artery as a retrograde access uh, to coiling of anterior circulation aneurysms in the case of uh, challenging anterior circulation anatomy. Thank you.